Hello everyone and welcome back to board game Red Dragon. We have another unit comparison for you today for the Eurocore Coalition and today we're looking at sort of shock infantry things like that and particularly Legion 90, Panzergren 90, and Rima 85. So Bikefish, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure thing. So for a starting point here, um, when we're talking about these three units, um, from the standpoint of, you know, that more we're looking at the units holistically, um, these units are all functionally identical to each other in terms of their anti-infantry capabilities. Yes, there are going to be some minutia in the fine details, but, you know, not one of these is going to be significantly better than the other in an anti-infantry standpoint. So we're mainly going to be talking about vehicle choices and their anti-tank firepower. Makes sense. So let's start with um, let's start with the anti-tank firepower, then let's move to the vehicles, I think, because we have on the Pigram 90, the Panzerfaust 3, we have on the Rima 85, the Apollos, and the Legion 90 have the Eryx, and these are all, I think, pretty different, really just very different characteristics for each one. Yeah, yeah, these are all these are all pretty radically different. Let's start with the Legion 90 since it's up on your screen right now. And because it is kind of one of the units that is more unique to Eurocore and is honestly a unit that you must be running um, in order to really be getting maximum uh, use out of Eurocore, in my personal experience. Technically, and that's because you get an Eryx. <laughs> It technically is a short-ranged high AP ATGM, which is really nice. Um, what this allows you to do over your traditional um, man-portable anti-tank weapon, um, like the aforementioned Appalachian and Panzerfaust three that we're going to talk about in a second, is you get additional range on this. Um, this comes at the cost of it technically being a guided weapon, whereas all the other ones are kind of a fire and forget, quote unquote. Um, so, but where the air really comes into use is the fact that one, it's very high AP value for an infantry carried weapon. And two, that additional range allows you to create um, more of a bubble around any sort of tree line or town that you're defending to where machine gun armed transports and such cannot safely come in and engage your infantry. Um, it is more limited to units that have auto cannons or other weapons that have a longer range than about a thousand meters. Gotcha. So then the Apollos is more traditional, the Panzerfaust three may be more traditional. Uh, what do you think about these two launchers? So the main comparison point between these two launchers is going to be their rate of fire. Um, the Apollos being a disposable launcher has 20 RPM, while the Panzerfaust III being something you reload has 10 RPM. Um, where this is going to make the most difference is in more close range engagements, like inside of forests. Um, having a 20 RPM launcher inside of a forest is much better than having a 10 RPM launcher, um, assuming all other stats are approximately equal. Uh, where the Panzerfaust III is going to come up top here is it does have that slightly higher AP value, um, and it also has a massive boost in accuracy. So in the event you're going after, you know, like singular targets or, um, you know, things where you don't necessarily have to be as compact a range, and therefore that additional accuracy is going to come into play because you're gonna get as much range scaling, Panzerfaust can be really nice. If you're in a forest, Apple S will be much better simply because, you know, you may be running into hordes of five point boxes. You might be running into, you know, more vehicles at closer ranges and having that 20 rpm which means you can get at power down range faster gotcha well that makes a lot of sense and that leads us into vehicles and then we'll talk about which one or ones you should run in eurocore general deck so the legion 90 we have sort of the traditional french wheeled vehicles like the vab the vab t2013 and then the puma and the puma pirate while as for pigren we have the whole martyr line and for Rima, you still go back to that French Vab and Puma, uh, as well as the Panther for the Rima 85. And as we previously mentioned in the logistics tab, this is a very powerful, albeit expensive, uh, helicopter option. So which one of these stand out, do you think? So from a starting point, um, we really are, when we're talking about the French units in this choice, looking at the Vab T2013 as our transport option. Reasoning for that is it does get a very nice autocannon slot to the roof in addition to being a wheeled vehicle. So it gets the infantry where it's going very quickly. And that autocannon is a very, very effective anti-infantry platform. I want to say if we're talking, you know, the spherical chickens in a vacuum realm of looking at paper DPS, it's like the second or third best autocannon for anti-infantry in the game or something like that. Um, so a very powerful tool to use. Um, it is unfortunate that it comes on a very fragile platform. With but only out one of armor. All the, yeah, yeah. Out of all the options available to us for both the Legion and the Rima, it really is the one that stands out simply because also that they are fighting infantry and bringing that more powerful fire support when it works. 
Rima uh, and the Panther is something that is a little bit on the expensive side if you feel like you're going to lean heavy on the Rima. Um, so if you haven't kind of played around with the Rima and see how you feel with them yet, I would definitely keep them in the bab. But putting them in the Panther um, is definitely something that you can do. It's just kind of a matter of how much you're actually using the Rima. I'll also keep in mind, that, that, like with the Panther, you do drop availability as well. So we have 12-8 Hardened Veteran here. Well, as we have 8 6 Hardened Veteran with the Rima 85 and the Panther. So just keep that in mind, too. Mm -hmm. And really, that transport choice really feeds back into what we're doing with our Pgrens. And while there's technically a lot of options here, there's really only one, and that is the Martyr <laughs> 2. So the Martyr 2 is a very unique transport um, in that it is functionally a light tank. Um, you have 7 frontal armor, which is very, very high for an IFV. Um, you have the 50mm auto cannon with extremely good range, extremely good accuracy, extremely high AP um, relative to some of its peers. I'm saying this as if it's like, you know, oh, it's huge, but relative to other IFVs, this is incredibly strong. Um, from an anti infantry standpoint, people may point out, oh, the 50mm isn't like the best anti infantry weapon. It doesn't matter. It still kills infantry very, very good. So, Pgrens in Martyr 2 is as close to a mandatory pick in the EC Recon, or not, he's not EC Recon, EC Infantry tab. We're going to get to Recon eventually, and they have words about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so just, just as an example, like, uh, Untaunt Mech is considered a really, really, really good deck. The Martyr 2, from my understanding, is a hard counter to the BVP, as long as it's within gun range. It's, it's definitely strong at, at fighting, you know, those more, more like mech taken ifvs a lot um really the only question that you should be having with a martyr 2 and taking it in euro court is do you up vet the card or not and that is really something that comes down to personal choice but i personally run up vet martyr 2s and that martyr 2 is just really slap hard what's kind of interesting here is the availability like when we look at the rima and the panther and the vab both the hardened and veteran availability went down but if we're looking at the ground 90 for whatever reason it goes from 12 8 to 10 8 so I almost think if you want the upvetted Pgren 90, you may as well take them in the Martyr 2 and you don't even lose any availability. Like it just, it, it's kind of weird. I almost wonder if this is not intended, but it's been around for a while. So, all right, so we yeah, talked about those and I'm going to push you for an answer here. Which one or ones of these do we take? And let's assume for a moment that we took Reservists in the previous, and then we'll go back and we'll mm -hmm. assume that we took Shasor 85 uh, in the previous choice. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you should be starting with all three of these as, as options. The EC Infantry tab is extremely powerful, but each of these cards feel, you know, feels their own particular role. And it really comes down to, if you do want to make modifications, which of them do you feel like you don't use as much? Um, in my personal experience and what I've seen from a lot of other people who've started with kind of my generally recommended slate is the Rima are something that don't necessarily get carried over or you do something like put the Rima into a Panther, um, you know, to gain access to a different transport. So that's kind of the different option that you would have, but there's a whole lot of different things you can play around with. Um, you know, the special forces squads that your get gets access to are very strong. Um, we just don't recommend starting with special forces for a couple of different reasons. Um, I don't think we want to go into those right now. No, no, no. But... And, and just for reference, like the, the Fallschirm Jaeger 90 and the Commander Marine, both very strong options in their own right. This is, again, this is meant to help you get into the Coalition and then from there play around with it a little bit. And uh, to that end, I do want to ask, you said take all three. If you do, do you want to up bet or down bet each of these individual options? I would say starting with down bet is a perfectly fine play, especially as you're getting used to the deck. You're not exactly sure how much you're going to get use out of each individual card. As you are going through and kind of getting more comfortable, up vetting the Pgrens so you get Veteran Martyr 2s is an incredibly powerful tool, especially in this more you know, mech-heavy um, environment we're in where you have to deal with those you know, hordes of lightly armored transports. The Martyr 2 is extremely good at cleaning them up, bringing in a Veteran makes them more so. Um, you can go for up vetted Rima, um, you know, changing around the Rima transport to the Panther and up vetting them, definitely something you can do. Um, for me personally, I would never up vet the Legion I use them a lot, and it's the one card that I tend to run out of more often than not. Uh, and Especially, then, you know, just... with the Eryx, I don't think we mentioned this, but I, I have it on good authority here that these guys are very effective in double stacks as well. And if you're calling them in double stacks, mm -hmm. you do tend to run out of them quicker. So 
that is going to be our recommendation for today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll have another one for you tomorrow.